And now, he's got a genie. Make your three wishes. Who just won't get out of his face. Got him on something, kid. I wish I had junk food to stop. Harder, harder, harder. Shaquille O'Neal, Kassab, rated PG. Starts Wednesday, July 17th at a theater near you. We did Thunderstruck last year, and so now we're going back to the well of movies starring basketball players, and uh, this is a big one. We're going to be talking about the movie where Shaq plays a genie. Yep, we're doing 1996's Kazam. A troubled kid inadvertently releases a genie named Kazam, played by Shaquille O'Neal, who must grant him any three wishes he requests. The movie's about this kid named Max. Obviously, the kid's named Max because a lot of, like, kids' movies from the 90s had to have a main character kid named Max, at least somewhere who has a single mom, she has a boyfriend who's a firefighter, and the guy's trying to, you know, start a relationship with the kid, but the kid is just not ready to accept him, and the kid's all upset that he's never met his real dad. The kid's having trouble in school, there's a group of bullies who are constantly picking on him, and uh, one day, the bullies end up chasing him through the streets, they end up going into this abandoned building, and here's where the kid ends up finding this boombox, which is the thing that contains the Shaq genie. Yes, this movie really was trying to be that hip and cool with the kids. So they decided to make the, instead of a lamp that he's in, they decided to go with a boombox. And, uh, oh, don't worry, because not only does the Shaq genie speak in rhyme when he first shows up. Make your three wishes and I'm out of your face. Back in my box and out of this place. But, uh, Shaq ends up rapping in this movie. Which, I didn't know about this. Apparently, someone told me about this, that apparently Shaq has rap albums. So... And a video game, that's right. He had Shaq Fu. Honestly, it feels like Shaq was trying to like be a cut above the rest of all the other basketball players who are trying to branch out into other mediums. He's like, I'm gonna be a basketball player, I'm gonna do rap, I'm going to be a movie actor, I'm gonna have a video game. And so from there, the Shaq genie, whose name is Kazam, uh, ends up forming a friendship with the kid. Uh, although the kid takes a sweet time getting to these three wishes because obviously if he did his three wishes right then and there the movie would be 20 minutes long and it wouldn't be a feature length movie. His first wish is that he wishes for uh, junk food to rain from the sky and uh, that was actually kind of cool. That's like one of the few good things in this movie. That part was actually kind of cool. So about the 25, 30 minute mark of the movie, that's when the kid comes across his actual birth dad and uh, it takes a while for that guy to realize that that kid's his son. And this kid's actual dad is this guy who works for this evil club owner who acts like a stereotypical evil Arabian oil tycoon. Like all throughout, he's like always eating stuff. Tell me that you couldn't have another fight. Tell me everything. Who knows that Kazam is a genie because of uh, the first scene where Kazam raps, where he says the uh, the the fire ass lyrics, "Let's green egg and ham it." Let's green egg and ham it. He spits out a bunch of fire and sparks and magical dust out of his boombox, and uh, the the villain guy sees it and he's like, "Oh yes, this guy must be a genie." Yes. Since we're talking about the rap, I just want to say there's not one but several times where Shaq raps in this movie. And when the magic is over. We ain't men, we see. Shaq's acting, I mean, it's the same thing we said about Kevin Durant in uh, Thunderstruck. Although I will say this, I kind of think Shaq's a better actor than Kevin Durant was. Like, Kevin Durant just, like, had no emotion at all when he was reading his lines in Thunderstruck. Shaq seems like he's trying. He's, it's just not all that good, and it doesn't help that the dialogue they give him is not very good. That's whack. That's horrible. Another thing I want to throw in here, there's a lot of parts in this movie where they do CG, and uh, you can tell this was during that awkward period where CG was still trying to get better. It's like, yeah, we had Jurassic Park, but, you know, other times you look at, like, movies that didn't have as good of a budget as stuff like that, and when they tried to do CG, like, there's a part where there's, like, CG French toast flying around. Anyway, going back to the villain, so he knows that Kazam's a genie, and at first he tries to use a female rapper to try and persuade Kazam into joining them, and of course her and Kazam end up forming, you know, a relationship, they end up actually falling for one another, and she's even like, you know, I'm not going to be used just so that you can get Kazam to turn against his, uh, his kid friend, Max. Also, of course, you know, there's going to be the third act falling out, where Max ends up snapping at him at one point, he's like, Talk to me, Max. I'm your friend. I don't need a friend. I need a genie. Now grab my second wish. I order you. 
And then, of course, later when Max actually does need Kazam's help, he's like, you know, oh, well, I thought we weren't friends. I thought I was just your genie. So, obviously, he turned it around on him. Kazam is way more focused on his rap career than he is, you know, spending time with Max. Was Max. He'll be all right. He was really upset. No, listen to this crowd. They love me. I own them. You don't own them. Say what? You don't get it, do you? The villain guy uh, is about to hurt Max and his birth father. That's when Kazam steps into action. He's like, you know, I, I can't be rapping on stage. I gotta go help. And so he runs off and he faces off against the bad guys. Later, they like explain why he wants the genie so he can become the richest man in the world. And then the kid breaks down why that's not a good idea. Third wish will be, quote, I want Malik to have all the money in the world. You say I wish for that, but you can't do that because if you do that, the rest of the world goes broke. Money isn't worth anything. Then I'll take all the money and give some of it back. And then they just tie the kid up, and then when Kazam comes to the rescue, the guy's just like, yes, I have the boombox. You're my genie now. And it's just like, no, that kid didn't make his third wish, so he's still the genie of the kid, not you. At that point, they start establishing this whole thing of Kazam is starting to become weaker because he's spent way too much time outside of his lamp and not granting wishes. So at first he starts getting weak, but th and, but then when the villain and his henchmen start beating him down, he immediately gets back up because he regains his strength. And then, uh, as it seems that the whole building they're in is about to burn down, the kid makes his final wish that he wants to get a second chance with his family. That's when Shaq grants his third and final wish, and, you know, the two friends must say goodbye to each other. And so from there, the movie ends with the kid and his family, you know, rekindling a relationship, you know. Uh, his dad says, you know, hey, maybe one of these times when I'm not too busy, you and me can go fishing. We can get together and, I don't know, get a couple rods and go fishing. And also, that's when Max finally accepts uh, the fireman's stepdad. Hey. You coming or what? Talking to me? Then the movie ends with one more gag, where as the kid's walking away, he gets a cup of hot chocolate. And apparently Shaq is no longer a genie. He's now a human who just happens to have magical abilities. And him and his lady friend walk off down the street as the movie then fades to black and we cut to credits. I could show you a nice hot cup of chocolate. You must not realize who I am. If you blink, I disappear. Get real. You're getting a job. A job? <laughs> I feel like this movie really is just a product of its time. Like, I could see a bunch of movie producers going, okay, so uh, we got Shaquille O'Neal, but what do we do? And a very popular thing with 90s kids movies at that time was having a kid interact with something else. I mean, I feel like if this kid didn't find Shaquille O'Neal as a genie, he would have come across, like, a family of McDonald's and Coca-Cola obsessed aliens. Like, I'm just thinking about it. There's another movie where there was a kid that goes back in time to the days of King Arthur, and he was, like, a baseball player. And I forget what it was called. It's like Kid in King Arthur's Court or something. But like movies like this were really popular where it's like you take kids and then you have them like go on some kind of like mystical adventure, whether it's, you know, with a group of aliens or a genie or a ghost friend with like the Casper live action movie or in the, the last movie that we did's case, you know, a Sasquatch with Harry and the Hendersons. Technically speaking, this isn't a very good movie, but at the same time, I feel like it's so cheesy and dated and there's a, there's a bunch of stuff to make fun of that it's actually kind of worth watching. Like, if you have a group of friends, I feel like there's enough stuff in here to make fun of just based on like how cheesy the movie is. The movie I kept thinking of the whole time while watching this was Thunderstruck, and I'm thinking, okay, which is better, this or Thunderstruck? This movie is more fun to watch and crack jokes at if you're watching it with friends, versus Thunderstruck, which was just kind of mediocre, middle-of-the-road family movie. And I feel like that's what this is too, but it also has that, like, that layer of like nostalgia, cheesy 90s stuff going on in it, like like Shaq rapping and like some of the really corny dialogue and quips that they give the characters in this movie. Excuse me, sir. Uh, I, I like to speak to Mr. Mateo. Who? Your mother. So yeah, Kazam. Very stupid movie, but I feel like you can get some unintentional laughs if you watch it with friends. So uh, that concludes the blockbuster videos of March. We're probably gonna be doing three blockbuster videos in uh, April coming up, cause we got a special video and then we got two regular uh, movie reviews like we usually do. So um, look forward to that when it comes around. Until then, uh, I'm Adam Sykes of The Blockbuster Show and we will see you guys next time. We genie, I can't